Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to go over my workflow processing for this shot of the Deer Lake group. Now the uh, large galaxy in this group is NGC 7331 and then you have some smaller galaxies up here uh, that are known as the flea, fleas and uh, those would be NGC 335, 7 336, 7337, and 7340. It is a somewhat popular target here in the Northern Hemisphere, and uh, it's one of the galaxies that's currently up. Uh, I started collecting data on this, I want to say back in September, and uh, pulled, pulled data on this pretty much every clear night that we had without the moon. I have a total of uh, 27 hours. Uh, integration time and uh, I did try to get some HA using an L extreme filter but uh, the weather wasn't totally cooperating and what little data I did manage to get wasn't uh, good enough so I decided to just forego the HA for now and just stick with this uh, one shot color. Now I experimented a little bit with exposure times I have my data split between 120 second exposures and 180 second exposures and because I collected data without the moon uh, there's a gap of uh, uh, data collection in the middle of that and it was around that uh, center um, that gap period with when the moon was out that I switched from 120 second subs to 180 second subs. Now the reason I did that was uh, the original reason for going with 120 is I was hoping to try to um, uh, get sharper details with the shorter subs but shorter subs usually mean uh, longer total time there's more uh, there's overhead right from each sub downloading and um, focus runs and so forth it's just more efficient you get more data with longer subs uh, I was also initially a little concerned about star bloat with the longer subs but with this particular camera there was no difference in um, uh, star size between the 122nd and 182nd exposures. Now because I had different groups of data I actually stacked I did what you would consider uh, uh, call sub stacks so this stack right here uh, it's the bulk of the 122nd uh, subs I don't remember how much time I have in this I, I want to say it's like 14 hours and oops, this one here is another set of 120 second subs. Yeah, you can see it right there. And then these two are the uh, 180 second subs, or I, I, I'm calling them subs, sub stacks. And so what you do when you have these is you pick one to be your reference. I used uh, the first group here and I registered the rest of these to that one and so actually what I did is I cropped the first one <clears throat> to uh, to the size that I wanted and then I registered everything to this one so you can see the registered images right here right obviously not stretched and then I stacked them using integration image integration Alright, so you register these, you save them, then you add them in here, and it produced this. Alright, so next was to run dynamic background extraction on them. Um, this is a, a test image that I use. So what you can do, since there's a lot of stars in this image, is you can remove the stars before running the dynamic background extraction and then you can pull out or open up right the tool uh, these are the settings that I used you can go larger than you normally would on the sample size since there are no stars here and just hit generate and then you just make sure you don't have any of these on any of the galaxies themselves
All right, I did a division and you save that process. And you see how it looks. And if it looks good, you can then take this saved process and you can actually apply it to the star image. And you don't have to worry about moving the blocks off of the stars because it uh, it uses the values that it got from the the test starless image. So <laughs> this turned out to be a huge uh, time saver here. Now I got uh, suggested doing this by one of my viewers who left a comment in a previous video and he said he had got it from an Adam Block video. So that just goes to show you, you should uh, read the comments. I have uh, good viewers and uh, there are little nuggets of information in those comments. All right, so this is what I had with DBE. Then I ran color calibration against it. Uh, for color calibration, I first ran the image analysis script to uh, plate solve it. And then I ran the color calibration spectrophotometric color calibration. And uh, I did use this um, QE curve setting for 533. I did do a region of interest for the background reference. And not a lot of color in there after doing that, but um, we were able to coax some cable, uh, some color out of there. Now, this is where uh, things get interesting. You see all of this history that I have here and some additional work over here. So this is the first process, uh, my first run through this data. And I ended up not liking the results. So after sitting on a day and, and thinking about how the results came out, I decided to uh, reprocess and I pretty much took over from this point here. Now I'll do a comparison between the two shots so you can see what led my thinking but the main issue here is that I had proceeded the processes as a regular one-shot color image and uh, I pushed it a bit too much and I got some of that moded color noise effect in there and parts of the galaxy just kind of looked like mud. So to deal with that uh, the way I went forward is I extracted the luminance from the color image and processed the luminance separately from the RGB data. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that you can use you can smooth out the color data and that takes care of any of that kind of color noise and helps keep the that modeled look in check. You'll also notice there's a lot less uh, icons here. So I did a lot of steps on this one and the second time through it was a uh, a more efficient processing. So I'll run through the processing steps uh, that I did here. So here's that luminance. This is where I started and you can see this is after I did the color correction uh, and then extracted the luminance. And that there's our first hit of Blur Exterminator. And then we're taking the stars out. So this is not stretched just using that auto stretch. All right, so I did make a, um, a clone and what I wanted to do was apply more blur exterminator after removing the stars. Now this looks uh, darker because I just pulled back on the auto stretch a little bit uh, so that we can see more details uh, in the galaxy core. So it made it easier to see what impact blur exterminator was having. Basically I wanted to better define the dust. I mean this this looks really soft. 
and so I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see the impact that blur exterminator is having so there's a pass and another pass and another pass and I think this actually was too too much I believe I backed it off one. Oh, you can see I have a mask on there yeah and that's just because it was it was doing weird things in the core it was too much the core I thought looked pretty good it was mostly these dust these outer dust bands that I was trying to improve with limited success <laughs> you can also see the impacts on this galaxy right here oh that's the mask let me remove that mask yeah so I made it a little softer it, it sharpened it up a little bit a lot of galaxies in this area that you're you don't realize are there alright so after that I started stretching and let's see yeah so you can see there's the initial stretch now you see a mass that's on there and basically what I did is I just made a clone of this image and then applied it as a mask and the reason why this works is that it's it's not as um, it's not as harsh as like say a range mask and so you can see the most intense part of the galaxy is getting protected the most and then these inner bands are getting some protection but what that does is it allows these to stretch as you're stretching the rest of it just not as much and you don't get kinda like that artificial uh, look when you stretch something while something out while a part of its mast uh, so there see I mean that allowed this to stretch a little bit but not as much as the outer parts of the galaxy and then there's no mask here and I allowed this galaxy center to get a little bit brighter I kinda like the bright uh, core of the galaxy as long as it's not clipping I mean that's the main thing that we're trying to do is stretch without clip clipping that center there so more work Uh, I believe what happened here is I used the dark structure enhance script and I was trying to define these outer dust bands a little bit better so I got to that point and decided to do some work on the um, on the color image the RGB image so took the stars out and then start to stretch just like I use the same technique uh, as I did on the luminance now right here so this is the color data stretched this is now blurring the data uh, I use blur exterminator and I maxed out the denoise option and I had no uh, uh, no um, sharpening option on here because all our detail is in the luminance so we don't need to worry about any of this uh, detail here we just want it nice and smooth and then we add the luminance layer on there and it was pretty much just curves work and a little bit of tweaking in uh, Photoshop Yeah, real subtle changes here you couldn't really see much change but this is pretty much where I ended up with 
Uh, somewhere along the line, I did use uh, Noise Exterminator again. Let's see if we can, yeah, all right, we can see it here. See how we got the, the grain? Oh, one thing that I did do, I did use a um, range mask. Let's see if we can see it. One of these. Yeah, probably that one. Um, to eliminate the color noise that was left over in the background, I just um, put this mask on there. In fact, I wonder if it's on there. Yeah, <laughs> it's on there. Uh, so I could increase saturation here, but if I reverse the mask, then I can, um, let's see. Yeah, I can kill the saturation in the background. Yeah, see how like there's some, you can, I don't know how well this is showing up on YouTube, but there's like some blotchy bits of red, of uh, blue and green in here. And so when you have that mask applied, just pull back on saturation. And then after that, you use uh, Noise Exterminator. Let's see, there it is. Well, that did real nice. So we got some grain in there. And sometimes I don't mind having some grain in there, but I didn't like the grainy transition between the background and the outer fainter parts of the galaxy. I mean, these parts of the galaxy still look like mud to me. <laughs> But uh, I, I wanted this to not look so grainy here. Uh, I do have a mask on, and right, it's that same mask. And so, because I didn't, I didn't need to reduce the noise in the galaxy. It doesn't need it. It's it's good enough. I just wanted to get rid of this grain. So there's a noise exterminator doing a great job there. Increasing contrast a little bit, and yeah, so I ended up here at the starless image. Then it was just a matter of adding the stars, uh, and all I did with the stars, uh, I just uh, manually stretched them a little bit, and then um, increase saturation, remove green, standard stuff, and there's the final image. So, not bad. It's it's a little softer than I would prefer. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, some of the tracking issues that I ran into, or um, or if it's just the nature of the of these um, Edge HD scopes. And uh, as promised, let me show you a comparison. Yeah, so. It should be pretty obvious which one is which. Yeah, see, so the left one is the second run, and the one on the right is the first run. I still think the color on the one on the right might be not bad, but I mean, look, I, I see it, this blotchy color here. I just wasn't happy with that. I wasn't crazy about how the core turned out on this one either. Even though the core is brighter this time around, I think it, it just looks better than having like this concentrated bright spot. And uh, if you look at these dust lanes here, I mean, they're both, they're soft on both of them, but there's no question that this is an improvement over that one. So same data set, just um, slightly different processing. All right, so let me know what you guys think. And uh, let me know if you guys had shot this uh, target. And um, opinions on which version is better. Okay. Uh, please give this video a like if you made it this far. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And clear skies.